Hi guys, I receive messages from people all the time who tell me that they enjoy reading classics but feel ashamed to share their love of classics with other people, mainly because they don't know a lot of other people who read classics or because they feel like people won't understand them or will think it's really weird. So today I wanted to talk about my own classics journey and I filmed a video before on why I read classics but I wanted to expand more on my emotions towards reading classics and how I deal with people who may Maybe don't understand it or how I deal with my own fear about reading classics and talking about classics online. I want to be honest and talk about my feelings with you today because keeping it real I do sometimes feel weird for being a 19 nearly 20 year old who reads books that are 200 or more years old. I feel strange liking the Victorian period sometimes more than I like uh, living in the 21st century minus all the disease and being sent to asylums and things like that. I sometimes feel like I understand Victorian societal rules more than I understand the rules of today. I think there's something so special about reading classics and I would never want somebody to feel like they couldn't read classics because they felt like it was too weird to do so. So I'm here to say today, let's embrace our passion for classics and make sure that we show how much we love them because we love them and let's not be put off by the fear of what other people think. So let's throw it back to when I first started reading classics. I have done a video on my journey with classics, talking about why I read them and where I started, but I started with reading Pride and Prejudice and Agnes Grey, and I immediately fell in love with these worlds that I'd never read about before. I'd watched period dramas and I knew bits about history, but I'd never been fully immersed in the world and I was hooked. But it wasn't until I started seriously reading the Brontes novels that I knew that I had found a true passion because I read Wuthering Heights and immediately I knew that I had a kindred spirit in Emily Bronte. It was around the end of 2015 and it was one of the hardest years of my life in terms of my mental health, which was at an all time low and I haven't lived many years so far, but it's one of those years that has had a long lasting effect on me and that I forever look back on with this haze of darkness around it. And amongst all of these feelings that I couldn't quite put into words or articulate, I found Found Wuthering Heights and it was so dark and so morbid in places but there was this hope at the end of it and when I read it I felt like there could be hope for me and my future too. I've never really felt like I fitted in anywhere. I much prefer my own company to other people's and even when I'm in a group I never really feel like I understand the dynamic or I feel like I'm trying too hard to be somebody that I'm not. I find it a lot of effort and I am a true introvert in the fact that if I spend a lot of time around other people I need about two weeks of doing nothing to recover from it. So reading Wuthering Heights about these people who lived very separate to everything else, about these people who had such strong emotions and this landscape that felt like it explained my inner turmoil, there was something very comforting about it. And then after I read it, I read a lot more about Emily Bronte and her feelings about the world and how she was viewed by other people. And I really did feel for the first time like I I'd found something that explained how I was feeling. You'll know by now if you've watched any of my videos how much I love the Brontes and they really did offer me a lifeline. There are some stories I love in particular about Charlotte Bronte hiding behind the curtains in Elizabeth Gaskell's house because she didn't want to face the guests. There's another instance where Emily didn't fit in because she was wearing unfashionable clothes and refused to conform and she simply said, I wish to be as God made me. There's one of my favourite of Emily's poems where she says, no coward soul is mine, words I try to live by. And so I went from feeling like I didn't fit in to feeling like it was okay not to fit in because there was other people who had felt exactly the same as I did. There are a lot of classics that deal with fitting in or being thrust into a world that you haven't known before. North and South by Elizabeth Gaskell, for example, the Bronte novels. Jane Austen is all about this comedy of manners, about funny things that happen to people because they don't exactly 
automatically fit into society or don't know how to fit in, or people who are on the fringes. There's Northanger Abbey, in which the main character Catherine Morland is convinced that because she's read all of these gothic novels, she is in fact living in her own gothic novel style world. There's Mansfield Park, where the main character Fanny Price doesn't really fit in with any of the events happening in the book and is instead a bystander of the events. And often when we think about the past, we can think of women who were silenced, who had no voices, and who had no control over anything in society simply because they were women. And actually through reading classics, I found an inner strength because yes, there are women who do wonderful things, but they have an inner strength in them that I think is far greater than a lot of the modern novels I've read, where books seem to be about outer strength instead of the inner strength that I wish that I had found and could still find in myself. There's a key moment in Anne Bronte's The Tenant of Welfare Hall when she slams the door in her husband's face, and that is apparently the moment that modern feminism was born. And through reading classics, I have been able to discover female protagonists who speak for me and who speak for people who don't have huge voices, but it's more about using our individual voices to create a much larger voice altogether. And for that reason, I've come to accept my quiet nature and my reservation in some situations as not being weird or unusual, but just being a part of me, just as it's been a part of many women for centuries. When approaching classics, I also think that there is a misconception about what a classic is and who classics are for. A classic to me is just a book that was written a long time ago and I tend to consider a classic something that was written before 1970, although some people may disagree with my definition and say before 1950 or before 1960 or even earlier than that, but I never want to consider my love of classics as limiting to other people. I think that classics shouldn't just be what has considered to be in the canon, which has ultimately been decided by a certain type of person, but I hope that in talking about classics on my own channel I've been able to show you that you can choose what you like to read, whether that be a certain era that you like. For example, I love Victorian classics, but I also particularly want to focus in on the 1840s and 50s or the 1870s and 80s. I hope that you might have discovered a love of romantic poetry, or you might have considered reading something written in the 1930s, or you might have suddenly found a passion about Regency writing. The way that I've come to view classics is as a broad term that encompasses a wide stretch stretching, overarching period of time, rather than something that has been considered for its literary merit and how difficult it is to read. Coupled with this, as I've been reading classics, I can sometimes feel a bit uncertain in my progress or my knowledge of certain eras or times or events or historical understanding. I can sometimes feel like I'm too young and I haven't read enough in the number of years I've been alive. People have even told me in the past, well, why haven't you read this classic? Because by your age, I'd read 5,000 and you've only read 100. So there have been times when I felt quite insecure about my reading and feel like I should feel ashamed for reading classics or not having read enough, for not understanding texts in the way that other people have. There's also the fear that because I haven't gone on to read English at university to study a literature-based subject, that I won't be good enough that somehow you need to have a degree to be good at it. So I suppose now I'm trying to approach classics in a way that shows that you don't have to have studied English, you don't have to speak English as a first language, you don't have to have a minute knowledge of every century and every decade of every century or every year and every decade in every century. Actually, you can read classics because you love them and because you found a passion in them and found an appreciation of the past and that is enough. I'm not saying that I'll never study English but right now at this moment in time it's enough for me that I enjoy classics and want to read more of them and want to expand my knowledge in a way that means that I don't have to study it in an academic sense but I can study it for, on a personal level and explore the things that I'm interested in. Even though I've read quite a few classics now I don't understand everything that happens in them and sometimes when I find something that I don't understand it can can make me think, well, am I stupid or am I too dumb to understand any of this? Why am I not getting it? So that is part of the process and eventually I think you see past that. And one of the greatest skills I've learned through reading classics is learning to study independently and for myself and to do further reading and research because I'm reading a book that I want to find out more about. And then because I enjoy it and love it so much, 
I'm more interested in learning more and more and more about it even after I have finished that book. I do still feel like I'm very young and I feel like my opinions are going to change on every book I read when I read them in the future and I feel like I'm going to constantly develop my skills and my knowledge and that will hopefully keep getting better and better but I do still feel like I'm young. I realise that not every teenager my age is reading lots of classics and has a very deep fascination with the Victorian period as I do. <laughs> I know that in my everyday life I feel like somewhat of an anomaly because I talk too much about the Bronte sisters and watch too many period dramas of Jane Austen books but I don't think I'd have it any other way and so I suppose my greatest advice for you is to embrace the things that you are most passionate about and to let that passion shine because I found it so much easier to live my life and acknowledge what I'm passionate about rather than hide the things and pretend to be somebody that I'm not. You should be who you are and I wouldn't have it any other way. So yes, yeah, sometimes I'm still ashamed that I am a big classics nerd. Sometimes I do feel a bit weird for liking classics. I do feel ashamed sometimes to admit what I've been reading when other people are reading other stuff. But I think people talk a lot about classics shaming, about people talking about classic books and shaming people for not having read them. But I also think there's a growing number of us, particularly us young people, who feel a shame for reading classics in the first place and I want to prove to you that it is okay to enjoy reading classics and that I'm doing just fine. I don't know everything about classics but that is part of the journey and part of the pleasure of it. It's about learning new things about the books we're reading and enjoying reading about the past. So I'd love to know your thoughts in the comments on whether you have felt ashamed about reading classics before and how you deal with the feelings of maybe feeling inadequate because you haven't read enough or maybe you feel like me like you're too young and don't know enough I'd love your advice too and maybe whether there was a turning point in your classics journey so thank you so much for watching this video and I will see you guys soon happy reading